In today's lesson, we'll be applying the slope, midpoint, and length formulas. The focus of today's lesson will not be the actual calculations, but the overall strategy, as many of these questions are applying what you know. If you recall, if you have two coordinates, you can figure out the midpoint of that line segment with this formula. If you want to figure out the distance between two coordinates, all you need are the coordinates of those two points and this formula. In our first example, we want to find the equation of the altitude from point A. There are two key pieces of information here, one of them being the equation. Remember, the equation of a line in slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Now, what exactly is an altitude? Well, if you look at this diagram, this would be point A. If you extend a line from point A to line segment BC, it has to create a 90 degree angle. To make life easier for myself, the point at which this altitude intersects line segment BC, I'm going to call this point D. Before we can create an equation for this altitude, we need two pieces of information. We need to figure out the slope of this altitude, and we need to figure out the y-intercept of this altitude. We can't calculate the slope of AD directly because the slope equation requires the coordinates of two points. We have the coordinate of A, but we do not have the coordinates of D. Therefore, we can't figure out the slope directly. We're going to have to do it indirectly. Remember, line segment AD is perpendicular to BC. Therefore, these two slopes will be negative reciprocals. Let's make a quick note of that. Since line segment AD is perpendicular to line segment BC, therefore, the slope of AD and the slope of BC are negative reciprocals. The easiest thing to do right now is to figure out the slope of line segment BC. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's start out with the equation for slope. So I'm going to write the slope of BC is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'll go ahead and plug in those numbers. So I'll have 1 subtract 4 and I'm going to have 5 subtract 17. I'm not going to write the work in. You can do that on your own. After doing all those steps, you should get an answer of 1 over 4. Because the slopes of line segment BC and line segment AD are negative reciprocals, that would mean the slope of AD would be equal to negative 4 over 1. I'm not going to write the 1 in though. I'm going to zoom out to show you all the work that went into finding the slope of this altitude. However, we're not done. We still have to figure out the y-intercept. Let's put together all the pieces of information that we have currently. Let's do that over here on the side. The slope-intercept form of a line is y equals mx plus b. I'm going to substitute in the values that I know right now. So I'm going to substitute in m is equal to negative 4. We just figured that out earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and put a negative 4 in front of the x. Everything else I don't know yet. Remember, our goal is to figure out what b is equal to. However, we need more information. If you go back to the diagram, you'll see that we have the coordinate of a point on the altitude. Therefore, we can take that point and substitute it into these y and x values. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to say sub point A, which is 9, 8. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put those values in. I'm gonna use brackets so that you know where everything is going. At this point, you should be able to do the work on your own. I'm gonna skip these steps and go straight to the answer. The y-intercept is equal to 44. We have everything we need now. If you recall, our strategy was to figure out both the value of m and the value of b, so the slope and the y-intercept. We already figured out the slope, which is negative 4, and we just figure out, figured out the y-intercept, which is 44. So let's go ahead and put these numbers together in our final answer. Uh, let's do that over on the side here. I'm going to say, therefore, the equation of the altitude is y equals negative 4x plus 44. In the second part of our first example, we want to find the length of the altitude from point A. If you recall, the altitude is the line segment that creates a 90 degree angle with line segment BC. Again, I'm going to call this point D, but we don't know its coordinates yet. To find the length of a line segment, you need two things. You need two points. We have one point, we have point A, which is 9, 8, but we do not have the coordinates of D. So we need to go ahead and figure that out. How are we going to find the coordinates of D? Well, if you look closely, this line segment of AD intersects the line segment of BC. Therefore, if we find this point of intersection, that will be our coordinate of D. So let's make a quick note of that over here. Point of intersection of AD and BC. Once we find the point of intersection, that will give us our final coordinate of D. And once we have that, we can figure out the length of that altitude. So that's going to be our general strategy. We already know the equation of line AD. We figured that out in our previous question. It is y equals negative 4x plus 44. We do not have the equation of line BC, so we're going to have to figure that out. In our previous question, we calculated the slope of line segment BC, and we used the slope formula to do that. I am not going to redo the calculations, I'm just going to write down the slope, which we calculated in the previous question, and that was calculated to be 1 over 4. As you know, slope isn't enough to write the equation of a line. We also need the y-intercept. So let's figure that out. Let's start with the general equation of a line. I'm going to substitute in what I know already, which is the slope. So I'm going to replace m with 1 over 4. Now, to figure out what the y-intercept is, we need to substitute in other values and then isolate B. I want to substitute in a point on line BC. We know two points on line BC. They've been given to us over here, 17 and 4 and 5 and 1. You can go ahead and substitute in either of these values. I'm going to substitute in point C, which is 5, 1. So the numbers that I'm replacing, I'm going to put them in brackets. You can go ahead and do those calculations. I'm going to skip straight to the answer. The y-intercept should be equal to 1 over 4. Let's zoom out to take a look at those key pieces of information. We know what the y-intercept is, and we know what the slope is. Therefore, we can go ahead and create the equation for this line. So I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to make a little note for myself. The equation of 
line segment BC is y is equal to 1 over 4x minus 1 over 4. I'm going to rename this equation equation 1 and I'm going to rename this equation 2. If you have the equation of two lines, you can figure out where they intersect by using the method of substitution. I'm going to do that over on the side. I'm going to say sub equation 1 into equation 2. Since these are both equal to y, these equations are equal to one another. So I'm going to write it like so. Negative 4x plus 44 equals 1 over 4x minus 1 over 4. At this point, you can do the calculations on your own. You need to collect like terms, simplify, and solve for the variable of x. Eventually, you should get something like this x is equal to 177 over 5. There are a lot of fractions in this question, so you have to be very careful um, when you're doing these calculations. Now that you know what x is equal to, you can substitute this value into either of your two equations. So either equation 1 or equation 2. It's completely up to you. I'm going to substitute it into equation 1. So I'm going to write the instructions sub x equals 177 over 5 into equation 1. Therefore, I'm going to rewrite equation 1. Everything stays the same except for the variable of x, which I'm going to replace with 177 over 5. You can go ahead and do the calculations for that on your own. You should end up with a value of y equals negative 488 over 5. Now that we've figured out the y coordinate, we have all the information we need for the point of intersection, which is what we had uh, originally been looking for. So this point of intersection is... Actually, 177 over 5 and negative 488 over 5. We are finally ready to figure out the length of the altitude. We already know what this coordinate is, and we've just figured out what the coordinate of D is equal to. So because we have these two coordinates, you can plug them in to the length of a line segment equation and figure out the length of the altitude. Remember, the actual calculations aren't that important. It's the overall strategy that we'll be learning. Okay, so you can go ahead and try to figure out the length of this line segment. It'll be pretty difficult because there are a lot of fractions involved. Uh, but like I said, the strategy is most important here. In our last example, we want to find the shortest distance from point P to the line L. If you recall, uh, the shortest distance between a point and a line is a perpendicular line. So if you take a look over here, I'm going to draw a perpendicular line. The point at which it meets line L, I'm going to call this uh, point Q. Let's begin formulating our strategy. Remember, the distance equation needs two points. We only have one point. We have point P, which is negative 4 and 5. We need the coordinates of point Q. We do not know that, so we're going to try and figure that out. To figure out the coordinates of point Q, we're going to need to find the point of intersection of line segment PQ and the line of L. We already know the equation of 
line L, but we do not know the equation of PQ. And if you recall, there are two things we need to figure out. We need to figure out its slope, and we need to figure out its y-intercept. Since line segment PQ and line L are perpendicular, that means their slopes are negative reciprocals. We know what the slope of line L is. Therefore, we can figure out the slope of line segment PQ. Let's go ahead and make a short note for ourselves on the side. Since line segment PQ is perpendicular to line L, therefore the slope of PQ is negative 1 over 7. Why negative 1 over 7? Because negative 1 over 7 is the negative reciprocal of 7, which is the slope of line L. Let's start piecing together our pieces of information. The general equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. We know what the slope is equal to, so let's write that in. I'm going to say sub the slope of pq, which is negative 1 over 7. So I'm going to replace m with negative 1 over 7, and everything else will stay the same. Since we know a point on the line of pq, p, we can go ahead and substitute that in to our equation, which we are slowly forming. So I'm going to say sub p, which is negative 4 and 5. So I'm going to put those numbers in, in brackets. You can go ahead and do the work on your own. Uh, you should eventually get a value of b is equal to 31 over 7. Now that we have the slope and the y-intercept, we can go ahead and create the equation of line segment pq. So I'm going to go back to our, our little diagram here, and I'm going to write in the equation of our line which is y equals negative 1 over 7x plus 31 over 7. At this point, I want to rename these equations just so that it's a little bit less confusing. I'm going to call this equation 1, and I'm going to call this equation 2. Remember, we are trying to figure out the coordinates of point Q, which is the point of intersection of line segment PQ and line L we can figure that out by using the method of substitution. So let's do that over on the side. I'm going to make a little note for myself. I'm going to say sub equation 1 into equation 2. You're going to get something that looks like this. 7x plus 3 equals negative 1 over 7, x plus 31 over 7. You can go ahead and do that work, which involves collecting like terms, simplifying, and solving for x. Eventually, you'll get a value of x is equal to 1 over 5. Now that you've figured out what x is equal to, you can substitute in that value into either of these two equations. So either equation 1 or equation 2, the choice is yours. I'm going to substitute this value into equation 2. So let's write some instructions for myself. I'm going to say sub x equals 1 over 5 into equation 2. Your equation 2 is now going to look like this y is equal to 7, 1 over 5 plus 3. If you go ahead and do the work for that, you should get a y value of y is equal to 22 over 5. What we've just done is we figured out the coordinates of the point of intersection. So we figured out what the x-coordinate is, and we figured out what the y-coordinate is. So let's go back over to our diagram 
to refresh the information uh, that we just gathered. So therefore, the coordinate of Q is actually 1 over 5 and 22 over 5. Since we want to figure out the shortest distance between point P and line L, you're going to need these two coordinates, P and Q. Once you have those two coordinates, you can go ahead and plug those values into the distance equation. The calculations, I'm pretty sure you can do on your own. But again, it is the strategy that is most important when dealing with these uh, multi-step questions.